Well, hello everybody. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a very, very awesome XP grind that will be netting you 11,655 XP per batch. Now, all you have to do is walk up to the bench. It's going to pull from all of these storage containers for you, and it's only going to cost you a little bit under 2,000 to buy all the materials to start this off. So to start off, you're going to go to Titan. You're going to go to New Homestead. You're going to run inside. You can see the gate right in front of me. And then you're going to run through this area, jump over the railing, and go inside. Run down. To the left is a store. And inside here, we're going to be buying the following goods. 58 aluminum, 26 beryllium, 33 copper, 59 iron, 4 lubricants, 6 silver, 29 tungsten, and 3 fiber to make the bed. Now, he's going to have the majority of these resources that you need. What you're going to do, if you need just a few more, is come over and sleep for 48 UT hours, which is four hours on this planet, which is why I like this planet. You just do everything until you have all these goods. There's a lot of guides out there saying a lot of things, but the Narion system is actually really good. I think people are underestimating that it's not just one thing. So we have beryllium here. We have copper over here, which you can use to make rheostat discs, which sell for 10 credits a pop. So you have both the capacity to make infinite credits and infinite XP, but also scale it up if you want more. And if you follow my other guide, then you know about my plutonium mining, which gets eight gold. So if you don't want the XP, you don't want to sit there and craft here on the Xbox, and that's difficult for you. You could just come over here and get plutonium. one base and it's all in one area. So it's really easy. So you're still going to get a really good result from this area. Go to the moon and draw off in the Narion system. I'm going to get this really quick. Resources spawn in biomes. Iron spawns in the mountains and beryllium, helium, and aluminum spawn in the crater biome. You can see on the right. Some people suggest you just ignore this and you just look at the biomes, that this is uh, completely useless. I mean, it is to an extent, but I also think that there's value. So what I'm going to suggest that you do is use both concepts, like look for a place where they're close, but then get rid of it and then say, okay, here's the mountain biome. And what I wanna do is be able to click here and see a crater's biome. And I'm just gonna keep clicking until it changes. So craters, craters, mountains, right? So this is a good spot. Ooh, I even got mountains there. So I think right here, because the next one over is craters. So we're looking for where the biomes converge and we'll have all the resources. So right here we have iron. And we're going to run towards the crater. Notice how I'm not running towards... I'm not running that way. I'm running towards the crater that I can see visually. Because that is where the next biome is going to start. So you can see how the biome over there is red. That is the crater. And this is the iron biome. It's a little bit lighter in color. So I can tell already that we're... It, there's aluminum right there. So we have established where these two biomes meet. So I have aluminum and iron right here. We could quit right here. There's also helium three. We could stop right here. But what you do is once you find where these biomes converge, you just run along this edge. So we got beryllium, helium three. Oof, look how, look how much is over here. So we have helium, aluminum, beryllium, and... I mean, we've we've got the Holy Trinity right here. So here we go. We got all beryllium, iron, and aluminum, but we don't have helium, which kind of sucks. But not really, because we don't need it. So let's go with it. So I'm going to start off by saying this. We're not going to do beryllium for now, but having it there is good because on the next planet over is copper and that allows you to build the dow rheostat disc which sell for 10 a pop we're gonna get one aluminum and one iron extractor up each that's why i didn't have to you didn't have to buy a crap load of all of those things now i want to preface this by saying that we have a sliver area here i can fit six extractors in here we only need five for this build so play around with your your base the most as much as you want but realistically speaking we're going to be going to venus or some or we can even sleep here and our storage is going to get rather full so it, do, it doesn't matter so one iron one aluminum and make sure you're doing everything I do it in order because we need the aluminum and iron to finish off this build. That's why you didn't have to get hundreds of it. So place two solar arrays. Remember you can hit control and scroll back to see a bigger view. And then next to your, your middle section or however you want to do this, 
you're going to slap down an industrial workbench. And from there, we're going to create some adaptive frames that we're going to need for storage. Sometimes it glitches and you have to save and load back in like when you can't open it. This happens to me quite frequently. All right, so let's make six adaptive frames. In order to get through the issue that we're seeing with over 60 links not working well, every extractor is going to have its own chain of storage. And we're going to want these to be as close to the work, like closer to the workbench than normal. So I'm going to kind of do these in an interesting pattern. So we're going to have five of, of each in total. So this is going to be, we're going to basically have the bench in the middle so it can pull from all the storage. I think they have a pretty good radius, but I just want to kind of make it look nice. So just to, just, just go with me on this. And then you can right click and then you can actually just right click. You don't have to hit E again to snap it to the box. And the same here. So now we have these established. We're going to place our bed. And we're just going to sleep for a bit. The time here is pretty decent. I know there are better planets, but like four hours is 23 hours of production. You probably only need two. If you have better skills, you can build better boxes. But I'm going off of the concept that you don't have that. So there you go. We got 77 aluminum and 77 iron. So now we can build infinite storage. So realistically, we just needed enough copper and all that. So we don't need all those other resources. We don't need copper or anything. All right, so we're going to do five of these, as I said. So you want to make sure you're getting as much space as you can. You can see here that I'm able to kind of hug corners. Just make sure that you're placing the circles in a way that you can maximize uh, your extractor. So I could fit six here. I'm only going to do five, as I said. The circle just tells you how far away you have to be from another extractor and that the point it uses for reference is like the dead center of that extractor. All right, so there's one, two, three, four, five extractors. And as I said, each one of these is gonna have its own point of connection. So I'm gonna move this back a little bit. And we're gonna need three adaptive frames per box. So we have eight boxes in total. So that's the 24 adaptive frames that we need to make. So head on over to your, your industrial workbench, make 24 adaptive frames. And we have infinite adaptive frames and that's actually how we're gonna make our early money and everything else. And it's kind of annoying because they snap a little bit. So you're just gonna need to give them some space. This is probably the most annoying part and I do apologize. Um, you can space them out a little bit if you want. Scroll, scroll down and then pop back up if you don't want to have to go off your screen. That's the easiest way to do it. So we got one, two, five. I mean, you could even put these further away, but I just think it's nice to have organization. So now we need a bunch of iron and aluminum. We're going to connect each of these to its own box. It doesn't really matter. Again, we're separating them because if you have over 60 connections, it causes issues. So by doing this, we can produce a massive amount of storage for each of these, which really negates time and the necessity of needing more extractors. And that's why I want these box over here so that we don't have to ever think about this stuff over here again. That was a little confusing, but I knew which one it was. Okay, cool. So now we have our, our major boxes and then we're going to feed each of these into their own individual storage and then we're going to feed them into the transfer station. It's just for ease of use in life. If you ever want to pull everything, you don't want to go and go somewhere else with it. Just sell raw resources. All right. And then we just sleep like four hours and then we just get a little bit more iron and aluminum so that we can finish off the solar arrays and you just place those wherever you want and you're going to build the remaining solar arrays. Yeah, you should have nine solar rays in total, giving you 54 power for the need of 50. So that gives you a little bit of power left, but that's going to power everything. And that's why you didn't have to buy all that iron. Now we have enough iron that everything is running. We're going to sleep just two more hours. Basically, anytime I need iron or aluminum, I just sleep. But it, it saves you thousands in the beginning, and it also saves you having to cart all that stuff around. So just two hours, 11 hours of production here. So 77 aluminum per uh, two hours. We're also going to be building robots to increase production. So now we're at a point where we're just going to be producing adaptive frames and bulking out storage. And I'm going to make probably like 
We have all of our power needs met, so we don't need copper. We don't need any of that stuff. You don't need to have three other resources coming into your base, just the two. I was thinking about doing powering with helium, but then I realized it was just stupid because you could just buy the copper straight out. Like, why set up an operation for all that stuff? But I showed you guys in my other video. I do these in sets of three. Sometimes you, you run into problems like that where it ran into an edge. Okay, remember you can go down and then up, down and up to unlinkify all this stuff if you get stuck, so. And you can just right click to change snap points too if you are having issues. Now I stick with the lesser setups like this because it's easier to problem solve what's wrong when things do glitch out. And I'm gonna be honest, I think that this is sufficient for your storage for each one of these. So basically just do this for all of them. But yeah, the thing about the threes is you don't have a, you don't have to move, you don't have to think. It's just really smooth. Okay, so we got six storage for each one of these. Now you're probably wondering, what is the easiest way to do all this craziness? I don't want to do this from up top. Well, you don't have to. Hit F, hit R, go into build mode, and voila, you can freaking just daisy chain these. So right click to the bottom, to the one above it chain them all up all right so that that ends that person and we're going to be ending these all with the one on top and then the same thing chaining them all together just like this so much easier right Okay, now we're gonna move the bench to the middle of all these and it will be able to pull from everything that's here. We're also gonna put down our transfer container. We're gonna link the top boxes at the end of our chain into this. What this will allow us to do is to pull from every single storage box in the game into our normal inventory if we want to. This is purely, purely if you wanna be able to pull these resources out without having to touch these boxes and transport them somewhere else. We're not going to do cargo links because cargo links uh, don't transmit in UT time. They transmit in real time. And I have a whole episode on outpost connections if you're interested. But for the time being, I wouldn't recommend even using them. They don't, they don't work very well. Okay, so here you guys go. You have done everything. This is it. This is as bad and as good as it gets. Let's move our bed over here and... A small landing pad I think we'll put right here so we can land our ship. A little note, if your ship is too long, it can't fit on these small pads. I know people have been complaining about that one. All right, cool. So here you go. And we have beryllium here too, so we can mine that and we can go get copper if we want to make some money. Or you can watch my plutonium guide if you really want money. All right, and now we don't have to touch the, the resources. They're all going to pull from here. So you can see all the resources are pulling here. So the next trick I'm going to show you is you need to scroll all the way over on the quantity. Some people have been having issues with that. They, they're they making one at a time. I'm so sorry that, you, that you, I didn't explain this. Scroll over on the quantity. That's how I'm getting 100 experience. So the next thing you're going to do on the PC, this is easy. On the Xbox, it's not. I'm sorry. So as long as I'm selecting it here, I'm not going to the next item. And I can just basically hit enter, click to fill the quantity, enter. And I just do that rapidly and boom, boom, boom. If you want to make this crazier, you can add more storage. All right. And sometimes you will get attacked. I'm actually, it's so rare, but repairing is relatively cheap and free. You can't place turrets down, but it's so easy to repair things in this game. You just gotta, you know, have a good gun. I had to fucking aim. I have to like run at people and place my gun on their face sometimes. It's uh, it's embarrassing, but it works. Now that guy tried to run. Here's a couple of tips. 
Sometimes you'll come back to your base and it will be, you know, trash. So just go into view. You can see on the left, the integrity is all the way down. You just hit C on the PC to repair. You can also do this uh, by foot, but it is, you know, kind of crazy. So I saw that they came from this angle. So I have the advantage of knowing they didn't destroy anything else. One of the things I do like for my power is I look to see if they're spinning. If they're not spinning, that indicates to me that they've been damaged, but I can be pretty well assured that there's no further damage to my facility because because I was here when it happened and I was able to stop them. You can also loot these guys for the guns and whatever kind of medical equipment they have on them. All right, and let's do the finishing touches to this and then we're gonna go to Venus and we're gonna fill this up. So we're gonna make six wire. That's why you bought the silver and copper. All right. And then we're going to build three sanitation mini bots. These are going to increase the production rate of inorganic materials by 10%. It's not necessary, but like it's just an extra little bonus. Then we're going to go to Venus in the soul system. We're going to land and we're just going to sleep for six hours. They'll give us 600 hours of production on our planet. And then we're going to go back. Right. And everything should have been full. I probably didn't even need to sleep as long as I did. You can see when you warp in everything starts filling in real time because it's catching up so these are all full so now you're going to come back so you have seven containers per operation with five on each side so that's 35 storage containers dedicated to iron and 35 storage containers dedicated to aluminum now each of them carry roughly 333 units on the smaller if you have the capacity to upgrade these to the higher capacity or if you place more of them you can make these numbers jump pretty high let's just go that a hundred of these is essentially a hundred experience so one for one relationship 11,655 experience is about what i should expect from this Okay, and as you can see, it is a little wonky. The aluminum, one of the aluminum had a little bit more than the other. But that took me about, I'm not gonna lie, it took me about three minutes. Uh, about five levels, which is pretty significant when you're level 55. All right, so you're probably wondering now, where the hell do I sell all these adaptive frames? Well, first, you're gonna have to hand get into your ship because you're just overflowing with awesomeness. And you're gonna pick yourself up to either two destinations, depending upon where you are in the game. Now, the key which is where the Crimson Fleet is, has the best. It has, I think, around six vendors you can sell to. Two of them have 11,000 thresholds. I'm wanted there, so that's not a good place for me. But the concepts here are going to be the same. We're going to go to Neon. Neon is another great location because you can sell contraband and other things there. So Neon is really easy to get down to. It's in the Vault 2 system. and you just go straight here. Now what's great is you're gonna first land up top and you have to go through an elevator and go down to the core. But once you discover the core, you can warp right into it. Now I'm gonna show you the locations that you can sell this stuff to. You're gonna spawn here and you're gonna have a lot of choice. If you wanna daisy chain it really well, go first to the Shanghai Outfitters. Talk to this gentleman here. He's got a 5,000 vendor cap. Run over here to the Trade Authority, and they have 11,000 caps. Now, what a lot of us do in this sphere is we buy milk. No, we buy med packs and any kind of medicine that we can get. But you're going to have so much money, you're going to be spending it on a lot of frivolous thing. I also use it to buy gear for my crew members. All right, then after him, run, run outside the Trade Authority to the Mining League. Come in here. And the great thing too is you can sell all your parts and buy things that you need for your outpost. You need more copper. You need a little bit more, you know, stuff. You can, uh, he can get, he can hook you up. He's got 5,000 as well. I didn't want to go into him. And then this person over here that I'm going to go to past the free rangers uh, at New Wells Goods, he's got another 5,000. And there's other stores here that have guns and all types of cool stuff. So, I mean, he's got lots of aid. He's got med packs. I try to buy all the med packs I can. But there you go. This is where you go to sell everything. And then you have benches all along this area. And you just need to sleep 48 UT to set everyone back. So hit B. And you can see here that 48 UT is pretty long. So you have to get 30. 35 hours is 24. So you're going to need another 13 hours. So you'll have to sleep 24 hours and then 9 hours to get your 48. And yes, it's a little long. It kind of sucks. But you can make these rounds. So you got 3 at 5. That's 15. You got an 11. So you got 26,000. So you do this 4 times, you got 100,000. And go buy yourself a nice ship. Do this 12 times and you got 300,000. And then you can buy the best C-Class ship that there is. Well, anyway, that's going to do it for me. If you have any questions or comments, please, please ask. All I ask is that you be respectful.